Hi friends, uh, welcome to another video of Kendraj Economics Club. Uh, here we have Amlan Bibudat with us. He's a, re, a he's a research analyst at CW, CEW, uh, which is one of the Asia's biggest think tank. And he works on renewable energy, electric vehicles, and decarbonization. So here he is with, uh, uh, he, he has just recently completed the MIT MicroMasters program on data economics and development policy. So here he is uh, with us to share his experience with the NDAP program. Um, welcome, Amla. Uh, hi, hi, I, mean, I can good to be here. I've been in touch with you for some time. Uh, it's good to connect over call. Nice, nice, great to have you here too. Like, let me just um, uh, quickly go to the uh, questions which we have, and like we'll be definitely dropping in links for you for further details in the uh, description. So here we have the questions for Amlan. So how was your overall experience with the course? Uh, this is a pretty intense course, right? So how was yeah. your overall experience? So my personal experience is that it was very really rewarding. Uh, <clears throat> so the course, uh, initially I've been doing, like I've been planning to do this course for some time, but I've been always been caught up. Like in, I started thinking about it in 2020 because I want, I, I, I finished my graduation in 21. So I thought by the time I finished my graduation, I'll be uh, finished with this as well. So I'll have, a, I'll have two degrees and then perhaps go for grad school. But then due to some uh, like adverse circumstances, you could say, or maybe I changed my plans. I started doing, I started working and it didn't give me time. So only last year when is when I started uh, taking it more seriously. So in 2020, I did some uh, courses uh, from this course, but not on, only on an audit track. You can basically attend all the lectures when they're active. Uh, these are recorded lectures. You can attend them, but if you want to do a certificate program, then they you have to pay for it. Usually they take some $500 or thousand dollars, but the, uh, since we are from India and mostly we are students, even if you are working, uh, I would suggest that uh, even if, uh, I mean, the stakes are so high that you can fake your income tax returns and they'll give you some good scholarship. <laughs> I mean, you can cut that out if you want, but you apply for scholarship. I did it for hundred dollars each. It was pretty hectic. They have, uh, so like any course, you have one and a half or two hour courses for two courses every week, two to three courses. So the breakdown good, like the important parts of that three to four hours every week. And then, uh, they break it down into like 20, 30 parts, five, 10 minutes each, uh, 10, 12 minutes each sometimes. And then you read the lecture and you, uh, Subsequently, for every lecture, there are uh, oh, there are questions, and those are not general questions. Those are questions that are dependent on whatever you read. So you read uh, whatever you uh, heard in the lecture. So you do some readings. Those readings are also summarized in the lecture. You do the questions. Uh, uh, these are usually MCQs. Sometimes you have to solve them, and they are not really tough. They are based on like if you have general intelligence, general understanding of maths and calculus. A little bit understanding of maths and calculus is required, even though they claim it is not. Uh, so uh, general, uh, generally you start read those, uh, sorry, you uh, attend those lectures, you answer those questions. Every week there's a problem set as well. So for the lowest, uh, I mean, the range would somewhere uh, be between five hours to 10 to 12 hours. Sometimes I, I was thorough with it because I had done some readings of the before, like in political economy, I had read about the institutional hypothesis before. So I could finish it in, I could skip and finish it in two, three, four hours. But sometimes I had no clue. For example, in regression analysis, I had already forgotten whatever I had read in college. So some courses took me some 10 hours, 12 hours a week as well. So <clears throat> you do it in cohorts. When the course is active, you enroll yourself, you pay whatever hundred dollars to fifty dollars depends on your payability and how you apply uh, for the scholarship and then after that what you do is uh, you give the so 40 percent of 40 every week there are 12 weeks every week you do those uh, problem sets and uh, weekly assignments that is 40 percent of your course the rest 60 percent is a final exam that is proctored the 40 percent is open book you can consult with people you can consult the internet the 60 percent which is the proctored exam that is a little tougher than Gen, uh, what you go through in the course that it, it is proctored earlier it used to be in some centers that uh, that constitutes all of the all the grade that you get anything above an 80 is a great grade i got i got about something about 79 uh, but i that also assume like assuming that i didn't uh, i was not able to attend some weeks uh, like i think they they wave off two weeks or two two sessions every week something like that 
that's not a that's not a bad uh, tra- record so uh, i mean <laughs> you could kindly give an idea on all these specific courses which you are dealing with like there are many courses in the program right yeah yeah there are so for the degree you can so these are like courses that you don't course ra is just that they are more commit like you need more commitment and they are stretched out over 12 weeks plus the this thing the exam now so you could you have a commitment of 14 weeks about 14 15 weeks uh, so at one point of time there are three to four, four courses that are active you can do all of them you can do one of them that's very self paced uh, so there are three courses that you four courses that you have to do one is microeconomics that is taught by jonathan grubber from mit so it's mit graduate level courses and undergraduate level courses that they have compiled and presented to you then there's data analysis for social scientists which uh, i think some another prof from mit and esther doflo did uh, that is also the same thing that is basically calculus plus regression analysis plus the trends in regression analysis what are the new methods like difference in difference instrumental variable but it so since it's fast paced you you under they, most of it will depend on what you do outside the course in in some courses in other courses like microeconomics whatever the teach if you master that you will have a good grasp of any graduate level microeconomics course so the three courses are microeconomics data analysis for social scientists and rcts uh, this the i mean rcts are flagship of uh, jpal and uh, you, you might not uh, you might challenge their uh, ethics etc but at the end of the day they are uh, useful tools so jpal and mit have come together and these are basically jpal rct courses that they have partnered with mit to present uh, and uh, they give you a good brief idea of how rcts are conducted from start to scratch so after this you can uh, somewhat with some assistance design an rct and you can run an rct as well so these are three four courses other than that there are three four electives and you have to choose two at least you can do three but i did three i did total six courses which out of which i got best of five but you could, the, these are political economy of development good economics for hard times foundations of economic development all these there are three four that you can go through on the website but you have to do two of them and uh, i would suggest doing political economy and economic development because then you would have a good knowledge of macroeconomics you would have a good knowledge of uh, what constitutes development in the last 200 to 300 years what are the big debates uh, is it geography is it culture is it institutions uh, and you have a good understanding of the economic of like like a very surface knowledge of economic philosophy and economic determinism the other course i did is good economics for hard times which is also based on a book by uh, asad aflo and uh, abhijit panaji and uh, that's a very cha- that's a, that's a low pace but a challenging course because it will challenge if you come from a basic uh, undergraduate course in india it's it's i will recommend that if you've done ma- ma- uh, bachelor's in economics in india it will challenge a lot of uh, your existing beliefs in economics yeah that sounds it's, it's, so, so it's 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 very challenging in the sense that it will intellectually stimulate you they will give you good readings and uh, from there you can actually like it's a good stepping stone to act, re- start reading or start uh, uh, getting into economics for a layman as well that sounds interesting um the like, i mean i'm um, talking about all the courses like there are a lot of a uh, lot of lectures going on and like there, there is this recorded videos do, do you find this format of the recordings of the lectures attractive uh, the styling structuring uh, was there engaging or like kind of boring uh, i mean we know that the video lectures at some point <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. tend to be boring even like the most uh, i mean the most respected uh, professor in the field is teaching yeah i would say i like this more because i come from an academic background where two years of uh, almost two, one and a half two years of the uh, teaching went online and before that i was i had to undergo surgery etc so i could not be present physically in many of my classes so i prefer this because it's and for you i mean since it's a hybrid course so i forgot to mention that should do the micro masters you can apply for the whole course if uh, you can stay go to mit stay for a year do a capstone thesis do some more credits and get a whole my, my, mit ma- ma- masters which is equivalent to a masters in economics from mit but just in data economics and development policy so i prefer this because i i am a working professional eh? we uh, i i mean i can do it any time of the week i i had no weekends i had literally no weekends because i had to give most of my time here a that b 
uh, as i come from an academic background for one year it was online before that i had some issues i had broken my leg i couldn't attend classes this works for me i don't have to be present whenever you require me to be present maybe we could have a discussion session on weekends uh, about this like a lot of courses have this that they give you materials they test you and they have discussion sessions where where students and maybe some teaching assistant or professor discuss stuff so that 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 is welcome but i love this self paced recorded lectures and it's free the courses the co- the certification is paid if you just want to have knowledge of some type of regression if you want to have knowledge of some type of uh some something that's been taught in that week just go and see it that's it you, that, you yeah yeah that's i mean you, you you can cherry pick you can cherry pick what you want to learn even though one, one is not planning to en- attend the entire course the course yeah, material yeah. such is a useful resource for yeah. uh, students of economics and other social sciences to explore and understand yeah. certain and, and for complete layman because uh, people so this is a new course it's been there for 5 years i guess now 5 or 6 years and uh, people who i saw profiles of people who did this or who went to do the whole program and many of them are not from economics background they are from say uh, some are impact evaluation evaluate evaluators some come from medical backgrounds they wanted a peek into policy etc so they did this some of them i people some people i know they did like a few weeks from some courses they did only the rcd course because they wanted to know about that so yeah that way it works out it's it's a, it's a good it's a good stepping stone for like knowing the whole world it's I'm, i won't say it's a very in depth course it's a it's an online course for 12 weeks and it's self paced it can't be that you can't have, you can't have depth in that right you can depth you can have depth in uh, in person courses where it's completely rigorous this has a lot of stuff it is partially rigorous but uh, it does not have the rigor of a complete graduate studies program yeah but like um, i'm mean, talking about complete graduate studies many people struggle in indian universities to catch up with the face of the whole lot of work, yeah, work yeah, yeah. they have in the masters program so yeah, i mean <laughs> we, we that point is like again a point of debate but uh, <coughs> again like uh, you were mentioning briefly about the qc qs and like what were particularly your strategies to crack them like were there any particular i mean you briefly explain those is there anything special that you were doing to uh, um, keep up I- yeah i was doing what somebody else also suggested me to do who was doing some other online course he said that if uh, if you don't want to do the readings and the readings are anyway summarized in uh, say the lectures why don't you play them at 1.25 or 1.5 why slowly wait for everything play it at play it at 1.5 keep your phone aside you're done with that sometimes so the <laughs> the curious thing is uh, you need to submit the assignments on a tuesday midnight american time which is 5:30 in the morning in india 5 5 am in the morning in india so my deadline used to be wednesday 5 am and i had to go to office at like 9:30 10 and since it is so fast paced i would try to complete it in weekend but sometimes you just want to leave everything and enjoy your weekend or sleep in right uh, so sometimes i used to stay back at office Like if you if if you're a working professional and you have the privilege of staying back at office and doing it, do it. Because at office, at home, sometimes what happens is that you feel really lazy. You can't do it all the time. At office, you'll at least be committed to it. You want you want to get out of office, so you it's like a self-imposed constraint, right? Like I want to get out of here, so I'll have to finish it ASAP. So sometimes uh, I used to procrastinate, and maybe at like. 12 am i would realize oh i have 5 hours i can't like I, i would have done other two courses i i took like three courses in two sets so that was a lot of work that that means it used to take like 15 20 hours 20 30 hours sometimes of my time that's a lot of time right <laughs> given you are a working professional yeah, so just, then <laughs> we have just introduced another productive uh, economics uh, like extremely <laughs> productive economics in no, india no, i i i learned this way i i <laughs> when i like since the last two years i did realize that i was not being as productive as i am i'm tra- right now i'm getting back on track i used to be really productive before but after so i had i had a i mentioned that i had a surgery then we had lockdown so everybody like i i i was just not into all of this stuff and then i started working so i went out of academia this was my leap in, i did realize after working that uh, i think academia is my calling something that i ran away from for a long time so yeah. i would so yeah at the end of the day i would want to work here so i did uh, 
tell myself that i will uh, i will do this i will do this will with utmost pace with lot of dedication and consistency i won't give any excuses whatever happens i'll do it i won't say that okay health problems but sometimes you have like it's inevitable so i did give the some excuses at sometimes and in those days what i did was i used to go to the questions see the questions and then come back to lectures and look for those keywords <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then during exam, because- so Amlan is giving you all the tips, yeah, like yeah, yeah. <laughs> all the all, all the all the ways of people like going around and like getting things done. But this is yeah. pretty common with all the online uh, online programs. Yeah, yeah, like you that. have to do this. You have to do this. Yeah. You can't. You right. can't have hundred per- like just like in an in person course, you miss lectures. Sometimes you don't feel uh, like turning up. Seventy to eighty percent is your actual say. Eighty to ninety percent is your attendance, perhaps. there's always a lag of 10 15% and that has to be compensated for in some form right so so for the viewers uh yeah amlan is being just being very innocent and like straight forward in explaining what all like tricks we are using but yeah, this I is mean, pretty common from what yeah. i know what i experienced this is pretty common practice having all the online uh, online learners and bad, but that's not a bad thing but like at the end yeah, of the day yeah it's not a bad thing it's it's you not cheating or anything you are just yeah. you, this is improvisation right this is improvisation of- it's an open yeah. test exam after all so it's no yeah. point like keep saying that um, yeah see I mean, see at the end of the day if you want to learn you'll come back to it when you have time secondly yeah. if you want to perform well uh, in the proctored exam that is 60% of the grade so if you perform well in the proctored exam you will come back to it and read it right so yeah. if you skip it sometimes at that week so that because you don't have time or because you don't have the motivation that week uh, mm-hmm. it is okay because at the end of the day you will learn that sooner or later so nobody is taking the knowledge away from you yeah. so that way yeah, yeah. Same. Yeah, nice. let, let, let us move to another question, which is like I'm. I mean, I would just want to know like which was the best course and the, which, which was kind of uh, the least interested, co- interesting course in the yeah. program. I mean, See, more. I would I would give three. I would say the most useful course. Uh, yeah. One second. The most useful. Uh, I, I would the most useful or utilitarian course that is that helped the most. then i would say the most interesting course and i which i would recommend and the and the least useful slash uh, most boring course one second my cat my roommate's cat is here hey putu yeah sorry <laughs> please cut that out <laughs> yeah so my favorite course uh, the most ut- u- useful course was uh, data analysis for social scientists because i i have i i am greatly inclined towards maths Uh, i like calculations like i like doing all that calculator stuff shakuntala devi stuff like you can sit with me give me square roots all that stuff but oh. <laughs> but econometrics is more about uh, uh, letters it's algebra and calculus like matrices algebra and calculus and it is more it is less intuitive than general maths and more uh, practice based i mean if you want to do econometrics uh, as a subject uh at this day and age you read uh, parallel you read i would i would say parallel you uh, i've not been doing it for a long time but right now i'm uh, like uh, trying to do it so parallel you read the subject the mathematical etc part of it the analytical part of it. and at the same time uh, you re- start coding learn some good language start coding start working on data sets because at the end of the day all of that is you as if you don't want to teach stats which a lot of very less people who read econometrics want to teach that you want to do stuff you want to write papers you want to play with data you want to come up with your own visa all of that depends on how much you know codes and uh, as as long as you have not written say 100 lines of code per day try doing that just like writers write it's a good saying that writers read and then writers write similarly you read the stuff and you do econometrics so i did data analysis for social scientist sorry data analysis for social scientist that was the most uh, interesting course in my opinion uh, that was the most demanding course not most interesting most useful course uh, because uh, i did realize that uh, what are the major strategies uh, that people realize like once you start doing econometrics after a point of time you realize okay difference and difference is being used in here etc etc here they in some sense spoon feed you that see if you want to study this kind of a setting this why not use this we are telling you you can use this because of this similarly rct is also a good course it's on similar lines that okay if you want if you have resources and if you want to see what's the most cost effective what's what's the best and and it's not unethical to have a survey design there 
why not conduct a short pilot why not conduct a randomized trial there even in on a, even on a small scale where you have a decent sample size so data analysis was my my most useful course most favorite or most interesting course was political economy of and economic development because it has historical background it uh, it, it gives you a good insight into public economics uh, and uh, it gives you a good insight into political economy and it generally gives you a good insight into the history of economics like uh, the major trends in research in the history of economics like there's a very famous institutions versus geography debate uh between institutionalists like isomoglu deren isomoglu jobinson etc and uh, geography people who ha- think that geography is the most determinant factor in economics uh, like jared diamond so and the the truth lies somewhere in between it's a, the the truth lies between these things so but you need to know both you need to start reading both those pillars uh, of debate so that you somehow arrive at a truth so it is really read uh, important to read all across the board so yeah that's that, in that sense point. politics that's it and that point with rethinking economics okay and yeah, yeah. some to to embrace all the sides and go read everything so that like we can finally make sense of <laughs> out of everything so rather like going and reading one side of the, the one side of a, 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 or any argument like go go ahead and read both the sides and yeah so also the, moving to the next question uh who do you recommend this courses to like who do you kind of um uh i'm finding it <laughs> cat tail <laughs> going on <Yeah. laughs> just, just cat just made the interview all interview very interesting <laughs> so, uh, i mean um i'm not going to cut that part out like because this is very cute it's, it's not even my cat it's my flatmate's cat <laughs> <laughs> so then who do you, who do i recommend this to I right so course. anyone who is an undergraduate uh, like i i I'll, i'll try to make like i'll try to think it through anyone who for sure anyone who's not had a, a shot at economics but has like people who are engineers they try to come they, they come into economics so read this before jumping into economics sometimes you might regret it so this is a good course at least do it on an audit track do some courses on an audit track uh people who like so non economics background people laymen etc people all across the age spectrum uh secondly students who are already enrolled if you can like if you are so committed and you can like uh, give some time etc for sure do this do do this and may, and put and do the certification because lately i have realized that uh, on paper you have to show things otherwise it, nothing matters you can i mean at the end of the day i i know certain things like i know i have skills but i can't prove them because i'm not written to them on my cv so do it because you can flaunt it so you can flex it uh whatever the word you want to use to do and that's important that's important in today's day and age uh people who don't come from tier one cities definitely do it you would get scholarship but do it for sure because uh, there's always a information gap between uh, places and uh, this this is something yeah. that will, like this democratization this is a very good example of the democratization of internet where you getting these uh, high level great lectures for free so uh, so students students for sure non economists for sure and people who think that they are not as well off as like big college students for sure yeah so the, the overall idea of the course is to bridge the asymmetry of inform, uh, information or the education um, which uh, i mean the first from places to uh, places i mean yeah. i don't know if that is there yeah, <laughs> that, that is how they thought out to be right. but so, so it, it's two things it it is like an executive course so if mm-hmm. you are 27 28 30 and you are already working and you want a peek into policy you want uh, a peek into evaluation data analysis mm-hmm. uh, empiricism so it, that is their target group one because a lot of people do this and then they switch jobs go to a better job or a lot of people do this and they use this in their own firms so lo- some people who went to do this from india the whole course they were from rbi and uh, second secondly uh, democratization for, for for sure i mean i'm assuming since the founders are like mit slash jpal people yeah. who in some sense are committed to social justice and yeah. uh, access so i think this is why one of the reasons they did it yeah sounds interesting and like um, um sorry we was the interview went like little longer because like i mean was very passionate about talking about the entire thing and he has given us like an exclusive sneak peek into all the things all the experience which he was going through we really wish to see the face of the cat like if it's possible but uh, apart from that she, uh, she ran away 
this was kind of a, a very interesting interview we had here so like just in a quick update to our viewers like if you guys are interested in such kind of interviews where we conduct interviews with people who have done really good uh, online pro programs which you guys can also adapt especially from um, rural settings in, in india and especially kerala so if you guys wish to know more about such courses we can bring in people who have completed those courses we will also try to update you with the latest courses which you guys can do in coursera or dex which are really useful for your future uh, or masters program or your career advancements yeah. we'll do keep on sharing those things and once again thank you amlan for joining us and giving us yeah. this uh, your amazing insights and like um many tips and like us uh, many secrets <laughs> so uh, thank you so much um for joining and like thank you all for watching this is when when i can uh, found out kendraj economics club signing off and like let's meet with another video soon okay Bye. okay thanks thanks take care